1964 TR4. I've got the parts just now that, uh, for the caliper rebuild. Uh, let's see. Uh, it's a uh, 583000 TRW. And uh, I recommend you get the very best on this stuff that you can. Uh, look at that. It fits all kinds of MGC, Ford Cortina. It fits other cars, too, I think. You can have to go to Mawson and uh, look up there uh, what else it fits if you want to look, if it means that much to you. Okay, so takes care of that. Okay, so here, here's what you get. Now, I'll tell you a little secret. Let me get you another part number. Well, you can look it up. Oh, I, I don't mind doing that, but your, your results are going to be different anyway. So you got to, when you get this kit, you got to make sure that you get four of those. You got to make sure that you get four of those and the kit. Oh, I got the part number right here. Good. And you get two of these little caps, which I recommend you use uh, because you'll get, uh, keeps the mud daubers out of your bleeders. And uh, now, also, I'll talk about this. I also like to wrap my bleeders with a little bit of Teflon tape. And I'll show you how I bleed brakes. I do it with a hose. Uh, it's the best way to do it. I'm a hero in the Hispanic American community of a nearby town for teaching Daniel's father how to bleed brakes by yourself with full effect. I mean, it's, there's not much can go wrong. And you end up not, uh, you, if you're careful about it, you don't waste any brake fluid. Uh, I don't generally reuse brake fluid uh, once it's gone through a system but uh, it can be done and uh, you can use it for topping up purposes uh, you know right then because you know uh, brake fluid so hydroscopic so on my particular calipers you need you need to get this seal uh, the 583 820 <clears throat> this goes when you crack the calipers now these calipers aren't like probably ones you've ever worked with uh, I think Jaguar was the first car to use disc brakes, which called a massive accident at Le Mans in the 50s. Uh, big, big story. You have to look that up yourself. Very, very, very sad story. But uh, disc brakes, uh, this is one of those stories about technology. A little bit too much in some circumstances is, is dangerous. And boy, was that ever a deadly, a horrible day. Uh, so anyway... Uh, most systems now have those pins and the grease, and it uses the equal and opposite reaction uh, to pull the uh, pads together just with one cylinder. Uh, the old uh, systems, uh, early Jaguar, uh, my E-Type has those, the calipers on both sides that you just change the, the, the caliper pistons. You don't even change the whole caliper. It's kind of a cool system. Uh, I may I may show you that uh, I've shown it before, but you know ongoing. But the TR4 system that I have has uh, cylinders on both sides, so there's uh, that can it kind of complicates the matter actually, but that's just the way they did it. So what's happening here? Uh, these are sticking, and I believe it might be because I use dot five in it. Uh, I love dot five. I had it in the car for ten years, and it didn't cause any problems. But I don't, I don't know if I can recommend dot five anymore. Uh, it has a super high boiling point, but I'm not racing. So I'll show you the kind of brake fluid that I use, and I'm very careful and judicious in my use of it because it's so expensive. And we'll go into the don't buy brake fluid in a plastic container and all that stuff. So we're going to get down there. We're going to have uh, little philosophical meanderings, and we're going to install this kit, and we'll go on a test drive, and hopefully she won't get hot. And uh, this will, of course, be using the uh, FLIR sitting on my table over there. So let's uh, let's go down there and get to work on this thing. Uh, don't cheap out on brake parts. And if you buy a car to restore it, don't get an aluminum valve cover, you know, for it. You know, fix the brakes. I mean, just just fix the brakes. I've had that discussion with people who buy cars. Well, I'm gonna I'm gonna put overdrive in it. Well. You better make sure you don't, you know, die in your car first. Make sure the brakes are as perfect as you can get them. So anyway, uh, let's go down there and get to work. Hmm. Something went wrong with the cam bike. So uh, Americans call this a, a uh, bulkhead. It's a scuttle. And there's a scuttle vent right there. Pulls in fresh air. 
Uh, only a couple of years of TR6 has kept that. If I ever had another, I had a TR6, it was a, it was a 70, and it had that, and then the later ones, they had a grill. I don't like the grills, and I uh, just don't, I don't like them. And uh, you want to keep in mind, too, uh, that when rain goes in this, it goes down in here, and there's a, there's a little, here, I'll show you. I had this, I forever figure this out. Just, just, just this little side note. There's a little tube up in there. And just trust me on that. And the tube puts the rainwater behind the front wing, uh, the front fender here. And that's, that's what causes a lot of this rot through here. Uh, it just dumps rain there. Nobody expected these cars to last so long, so that's part of it. But what happened over here, I really want to fix these wires, was, uh, and I don't drive this car an awful lot. Don't, don't ever do this. Where's my step thing? So, I've got multiple problems that I've discovered. And, uh, oh, remember, you're up on the lift. So, got to clean this out with the nature dial. See, it's still clean. It's just that I don't know why it's causing the brakes to, to stick, and that's bothering me. Now, this is the clutch, and it's actually filthified. It's got that traditional gunk on it, that scum, and you can't see in the bottom of the thing but you, well, yeah you can and it's full of filth down in there and that's just from sitting here I mean I don't drive her a whole lot but uh, so there's not a hot a lot of hot cold you know cycles so uh, there's that going for us let's see if I can get down here <clears throat> all right so I gotta get a uh, catch pan catches if you can pan and this is what I use for that. This is when I got brake jobs like this. I generally pull this thing out. My cousin Larry gave me, gave me these. Ooh, big old spider. What do you know? I'm sorry, fella. But we're just not going to be able to have you around in the world. Ooh, I got a little wet spot there. Sorry. Oh, there's another one. Good God. Okay. So we're going to catch all our brake fluid into this thing and uh, dispose of properly. Well, I guess I, guess I got to get my torch and clean some of these cobwebs out of here. So let's uh, get to work. I'm going to have the sun right here on me in a minute. I'll got to close that door. I was partially trained, not trained, but spent time with a guy named Carol. And Carol was an FAA certified mechanic. And he... Uh, he taught me a couple of little things that are important to know. Uh, one of the most important ones is if you're working on calipers, do one at a time. Don't take them all off and mix all the parts up. Don't Just don't do that. Do one and then the other. And you'll see stories on YouTube of people, they'll take them both off, they'll put them back on, and then they can't figure out why their brakes uh, won't bleed. Well, fact is, it's because you put the bleeder, which is here, on the bottom. And that can that can be done, and you know you're never gonna get the air out of them. So uh, I mean, you might get a lot of it out, but you won't get it all out. You'll never have a good firm pedal. And uh, so uh, let's. I can't wait to see these brake pads. They look good. But uh, anyway, let's uh, let's crack her loose here. And uh, all right, there you go. And I gotta put, put my gloves on. But let's crack it loose and. See what's going on there. Now, there it comes. All right. So these are going to be busted apart and put in the ultrasonic one at a time. Can't drive that home enough. Okay. Okay. So got a new battery in my, my car. I'm real happy about that. Okay. I don't need this. Watch too much light for me. Okay. I've uh, blown this out and blown through it and it's not clogged in any way so that's step one and you got to remember these will use the uh the ever popular uh copper washer you need to replace those luckily i keep i keep a set of them handy and uh so uh, i think it was like this i didn't i didn't realize it was so long well we'll, we'll play with that in a second 
I think I think it was this goes into the caliper. Gotta watch every little thing, don't you? And boy, that fluid looks kind of nasty. So it's still coming out of there. There it comes. All right. Okay, I'm gonna clue you in on a little secret here. Uh, there are two outer bolts for the caliper, and they are 9 sixteenths. And these two inner ones are 5 eighths, and the bolts that hold them on are 5 eighths. While you got the car as the weight, go ahead and, and loosen these up. Now, I can tell you again, the book says don't do what I'm doing here. I'm, I've done it maybe 20 or 30 times. So you get that one loose. You get all them loose. And then you get that one there loose. Okay. It's amazing how they, they fight you and then they just break loose. Now, I'm not going to split them right here on the car. I'm going to put them, I'm going to put them down. Brake fluid, I should have put my gloves on. I said I was going to and I didn't do it. It's kind of hot today, actually. Seeing a few bugs flying around, it's not good. So, and this air is kind of steel. So, now we're going to go for the main bolts back here. I'm not much of an air tool guy. On British cars, uh, I, don't, I just don't think that that's the appropriate way to do it. So I'm just going to keep you with me here, and we'll we'll just wobble around here in a second. Well, I'll tell you, what, I'm going to turn you off. And you, you see, you see what I mean? There's six bolts total. Okay, the other thing to do is you pull out these there's these pins, and you got these little clips. Those look pretty doggone good, too. I'm happy with them. And uh, then you just push these pins out right here. Or, and then put those in the ultrasonic cleaner. And then uh, this calls for uh, nitex. Where are they? Those, these will do fine. Now, see what I mean? There's a piston on both sides in this thing. Let's get a little bit, whoa. Those are just ungodly tight. Now, these are your little shims and you should have those. A lot of them, you'll see a little arrow in the old days. That was kind of bent up there. Okay, we'll straighten that out on, on the vise in a minute. Let's see what these look like. Well, they don't look bad. They're even, that one's even anyway. Don't get any break fluid on that. Okay, so let's do the other side. I may go see if there's another brand of these somehow, somewhere. Somewhere out there. Okay. They used to have little open half moon things there. But uh, those look pretty good. I don't know what brand those are, but... I may have to see about that. Well, the pistons are out some. So they're just tighter than a 10 cent top. So, okay, let's get this caliper off here now, like, like I said I was gonna do. Okay, so, all right. I'm gonna roll on this because I don't know what I'm gonna expect. Now, when you tap this, tappy tap that off to use Use a Thor copper hammer or something, leather or lead or whatever you got that's soft. Don't don't go whacking on this thing. With it. There you go. She's already loosened up. Now I'm going to show you. She's dripping there now too. Yeah, we're going to clean her up nice. Now if I do powder coat this thing, which I doubt, it depends. It, it will be black. And, uh, all right. Oh no, I'm gonna get a copyright violation. Stop it. Okay, Whew. just in time. All right. I gotta tell you, 
I love my new internet. Okay, now see right there, there's the little, let's make sure we're, there's the little seal that they say you should never even look at. Don't even look at it. But uh, we're going to look at it, and I'm going to take it out. I don't think that's the uh, appropriate one. It's supposed to have a little lip on it, but that's okay. So there's one. Now, the way to, you can use air pressure to blow this out. Go outside, though, and put something over your face. Because uh, it, ain't, it ain't pretty. Uh, all right. And uh, I love snap-on stuff, but sometimes it's a little too snap-on-ish. Okay. You wear a full face guard if you're going to do it that way. And put a big cloth over it. Yeah, this thing's got a little rust on it. So it'll be nice to clean them up. And if, if I have them retract, it'll be even nicer. And we're going to check something else here in a second, too. All right, so there's the back side. Now, here is the uh, this, and I think it goes... I can't... I don't know. That may be wrong. It could have slipped. I don't know. Oop, that's not good. Look at that. It's okay. <laughs> Something put a big chunk out of the back of us anyway. Okay, these are different threads. Okay, that must be that must be that one. Yeah, I guess that's it. Well, it'd have to be. Whoa! I didn't realize it went down so far. I don't know if I was in frame, but I'm trying to keep away from the paintwork. I gotta get my nail polish out now and fix that little bit I did there. Now, I'm not scared of this brake fluid, but it is still brake fluid. Okay, we'll fix that later. Okay. One step forward, huh? Yeah, I think it's time to clean them up. Okay. Uh, I'm not going to show the process of blowing this out. You've probably seen it enough times. Uh, let me let me get uh, let me get away from the cars and, uh, and make sure I got enough air hose and get outside. So in order to get the back side off, they just popped right out of there. So this is what's down in there. That's not possible. Well, I guess it is possible. I try to be clean. So this is the front one. Boy, look how look how horrible that is. Well, no wonder they're sticking. Uh, I think I'm gonna. Well, these are stainless while well, they're coming there, coming clean. Look at how dirty that is. I, I am really, I'm really ashamed of myself. That is really bad. Uh, well, let's clean it all up. And, uh, hmm. Oh, well, what I was going to say was, when you, you, you got to put your bleeder back in to get, to get the back one out because the air just passed through there. So I've got my ultrasonic heater heating and just wipe these off a little bit. There's no sense in dumping all this in your ultrasonic unless you have to. Maybe I'll, I got tons of brake cleaners. I think I'm going to take them out in the, in the outside and spray them off and get the majority of this out of here. Wow. What do you know, huh? Really dirty. I am. Generally, that's the case. Uh, no matter how hard you try. Flush, supposed to flush out your brake fluid every two or three years or so many miles whatever so uh, this is a good indicator I try to do that I mean uh, what do I put on this car here three four hundred miles maybe if that and uh, so that's probably part of the reason that this has happened too it's just not been driven enough well now it explains your stickiness doesn't it <laughs>